G'day everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook and today is a solo camping adventure to a remote deserted beach or island. I'm going to catch either a fish or try and shoot a crayfish with my spear gun and we're going to cook it up on, I've got a little barbecue in the car would you believe, I've, I've got so much stuff. Anyway, I'm going to rig up my rod and there's a little reef here. We'll have a little poke around here but the first thing I think I'll do is get to my destination, unload some gear and suss it out, check it out. I've never been this way before. Right. It's gonna be an exciting trip. The rod I'll rig up first is the Aird X. It's a 4000 combo. And I've got a 30 pound leader. Now the lures I'm gonna use in this trip are all from the Tackle Club. It's from July 2020, so it's a little bit old. I'm a little, little bit behind. But all the lures are from that Tackle Club box. Um, I did buy a few extra hooks because there was only one packet of hooks in there. I'll show you what's in that box later. We've got a, a reef edge here. It's about five meters at the drop off, probably two meters at the top. Yeah, I'm hoping for yeah, coral trout or something, although I don't really want something really early. I just want to have a bit of a play around on the way to camp. Um, I am doing this solo. So yeah, just I just I just need to be quite safe. Um, there are big tiger sharks around here. There we are, all nicely rigged up. And I reckon this colour is a really nice trout lolly. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a reef edge here. This is a little island. We'll probably fish around a couple of islands today and tomorrow. And all I'm doing is casting it right near the reef edge, letting it sink a little bit. And then tap tap, like a distressed bait fish. I want the lure to go on there. Another one. Yep, got him. That's a fish. Oh, I dropped him. Got him. No, I have got him. <laughs> Everyone always says, oh, you say got him, dropped him, got him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, what have we got? Looks like a coral trout. Oh, yes, that's a coral trout. Oh, that's a little bit early for me. Oh, that's, that is what we wanted though. Check this guy out. Coral trout, about the fifth or sixth cast. Beautiful. Now it is a little bit early, I haven't set up camp or anything, so I'm going to let this guy go and I hope I don't regret it later on. He's probably, actually I'd say he was, would be legal. He's probably one or two centimetres over legal size. But yeah, it's a bit too early for me. It's, um, I don't know, 10.30. And yeah, I'm not going to set up camp till probably at 2.30. We'll put the fish back in what I call my fish keeper. <laughs> There he goes. That's pretty cool though. Probably a fifth or sixth cast. Nice coral trout. It's a good day already. Just want to show you the lure I caught the coral trout on. It's a five inch Z-Man in bubblegum colour. Um, in my opinion, trout love this as well as orange. So no surprise I got a coral trout on that. We'll have a little look at this island here. It's only small. There's no beaches on it. But I like exploring, so we'll just have a little poke around. And then what we'll do is we'll head over to the next island, this one over here. I like to paddle in close to, to check out the land. What we've got here is a, like a, a stand of mangrove trees. I'm actually getting better at finding food in different locations and mangrove forests are one of my favourite places. Part of, part of exploring for me and making these videos is to, to go and check out different environments. And I'll be definitely trying to find more bush food every episode that I go out. Um, whatever I find, I'll show you guys. Just spotted a bunch of fish on the sounder. It's 10 meters deep, and they're about two meters off the bottom. So we'll see if we can catch something. Um, yeah, we're in probably well, three kilometers from the island and two k's from the beach. So we're out in the middle of the bay. Could be anything. I, I don't know. Could be mackerel. Um, they're definitely not on the bottom. Oh, here you go. Straight away. Oh. Ooh! <laughs> First drop! 
That is a good fish. Oh. Oh, going backwards. Oh. That is a good fish. Wow. Yeah, I've got no idea what this is. I'm going backwards now. We are doing 1.7 kilometers backwards. <laughs> and it hasn't gone weighted. Wow. Mind you, it wasn't on the bottom, so. Oh, it could be Golden Trevally. That could be my next bet. It's it's fighting really strong and really hard. Okay, that's that's my call. Golden Trevally. Let's see what let's see what it is. It has a lot of weight, and there's still fish right under me. This is cool. We're doing 1.8 k's back. It's not actually sideways now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I reckon that's a golden. Just the way it's fighting, Golden Trevally. And by the weight of it, it's quite a big one. Oh, the sounder is just covered in fish. I'm going to have to mark this spot. I'll be, I'll be coming back here for sure. Wow. Let's see if I'm right about what species this fish is. Okay, he's coming up now. Let's see. Oh, I've got a bit of colour there. It's definitely... I'm not winning. I thought I had him. He's gone straight back down to the bottom. Oh. We're now doing two and a half kilometers an hour. And not the way I want to go. Ooh, there he goes. This is not what I had in mind. I, I just want to go to the camping spot and set up. I really didn't want to fight a fish like this for half an hour. It's been about at least 15 minutes now. And these things, the Golden Trevally, they never give up. If it is a Golden Trevally, I don't think it's a GT. It's, um, it definitely looks like a trevally shape to me. Oh, he's got another boat. It's definitely a monster trevally of some sort. It's um, probably 20 minutes now, and he just keeps going down. He's got a lot of weight in him. I just hope he doesn't get shark. He's spending a lot of time down there making a lot of vibrations. Yeah, 100% it's a golden trevally. A monster. That is a monster fish. Let's get him up. Oh, look at him. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, I missed him. Come here, fish. Got him. Guys, check out this fish. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> That's got to be 10 kilos of Golden Trevally right there. Oh, second fish for the trip. Oh, way too big for me to keep. I've got no ice on board. So this one goes back into my ocean storage system as well. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Oh. All right, buddy. Let's um, we'll get a quick measurement, hand measurement. 26. 52, 70, oh, what is it, 77, I think around 77 centimetres, look at that guy, oh, beautiful, let him go, woohoo, Second fish for the trip, and that was 25 minutes of pure fighting. Those things never give up. That is cool. I've got to put a GPS mark on this spot. Oh, I don't want to do that again. There are plenty more. I'll show you the sounder, hopefully. I, I will drift it off it now, but I'll see if I can find them again. I'll show them to you on the sounder. But let's go get make up camp. The, um, the wind is picking up a little. <laughs> is this a good start to a trip or what? Woo! <laughs>
and that's that's more fish there. So I think we should have another another crack at those guys. Yeah, got him. Oh. <laughs> How good is that? I just found another group of fish on the sounder, and uh, straight away, oh, it's a little shark. Oh, this could be trouble. A little, looks like a whaler. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was a whaler. He's gonna probably bite me off. There's actually another one following him. We've got two sharks here near the boat. Here they are, right here. Oh! Got to be careful with this guy. He, um, he could bite me quite easily. Ah, I kind of wouldn't mind if he bit himself off because they have really sharp teeth. They've only got little teeth, but they really cut you. I actually got bitten on the on the thumb once by a little shark. Okay, I'll try and get him. Oh, there he goes. There you go, he just bit through that. There is a heap of fish on the sound, or I might have another go. I know I've got to get there, but <laughs> it's just so much fun. I think there's actually bait schools here with, with fish hunting them. So, I'll show you on the sound. That's pretty cool. I'm just literally out in the middle of the bay still. I've got about oh, less than a kilometre to go to the, to the big island. Um, I think we will camp on the big island. But just to go across the, the bay here, it's ten and a half metres. It hasn't changed depth much the whole way across. But every now and then I see a school of bait fish and big arches under them. Or sometimes beside them. So that's always um, a sign of predator fish hunting like a bait school. There we are, rigged up again. They're just three eighths ounce uh, jig heads. And check this out, the fish is still there, look at that. That there is the fish, so he's going straight over to catch another one. Or to hook, to get me there, hopefully not a shark. I'll cast back a little bit because that's where most of the fish were. But the one that just hit me then, he was right near the surface, so yeah, there's plenty of fish here. I'm just letting that go all the way to the bottom. I'm, I am seeing probably another half a dozen arches right on the bottom. Yeah, no idea what I'm going to catch. There are so many fish on the sounder here. Hopefully they're not, they can't, they can't be all sharks. There's, there's got to be like 30 fish now. I think I just got bitten off. Oh, I don't have any wire on me. I think they might be all sharks. Look at that. I just got bitten off again. Wow. Okay. I don't know what to do. I don't have wire with me. Hmm. All the lures I have with me are from the Tackle Club July Inshore Saltwater Box. Let's see what they are. We've got Megabyte, Snatchbite Shrimp 4 inch, and we've got Lunker City, oh, sorry, gold and pink. Nice color for a little bit dirty water. Then we've got Z-Man Streaks, five inch, five pack. They're, they're good, they're um, very tough lure. Some Jig Heads, three eighth ounce, uh, five o, good size. A Samaki Jig, 60 gram. Some Damiki Soft Plastics, Anchovy Shad, five inch. And then DJ Jig Minnow. This could be good for, yeah, queen fish and little mackerel and stuff. And here's a breakup of what's in the box. I've had a look at their website and Tackle Club actually has some really cool specials for Christmas coming up. Uh, gift sets. So check that out. I know it's not conventional but I've got a, a weedless hook with a sinker that's kind of got a bit of extra wire on it. And I'm just rigging the plastic right down, down low. That way there's a, a bit more distance between the monofilament or the, the fluorocarbon. And the hook. I'm gonna give that a go. If, if I get bitten off here, I'm just gonna leave them. It's, it's not worth losing all my gear. I've just seen another big school of fish on the sounder, so I'm just gonna have a quick go. Can't pass up an opportunity to suss out what they are. Yeah, got 
tell you what, it's not hard to hook a fish today. Oh, it's like the third spot. And every time I, oh, this, this is a big one. This is a big one. Every time I put my rod down, I hook something. Ooh. I've actually tightened the drag on this one a little bit more. Because that, that golden trevally, that was 20, I think 25 minutes. I'm hoping this one will be a little less. But this, this is actually a bigger fish. This is a much bigger fish. Wow. Wow. Okay, kayak, come on, start following. We're gonna run out of line if we... Here we go, we're doing two and a half kilometers an hour forward. <laughs> the fish is towing us. Actually, he's towing us to where we wanna go. Oh, that's cool. I'm just gonna steer and let the fish tow us to the island. <laughs> oh, this is cool. I don't care what sort of fish it is. He's doing all my paddling. I'm just gonna sit back and we are doing three and a half kilometers. The fish is towing me at three and a half kilometers an hour. That is cool. 3.7 now. <laughs> wow. Oh, this, this is fishing. This is fishing. <laughs> Let's see if we can reach four. This, this is a big fish. This is a very big fish. Yep, we just hit four. Three, eight, four, 4.26 kilometers per hour. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. Uh, it could be another big golden trevally, but if it is, it's a, it's a really big one. We are totally being towed to where we want to go. I'll spin you around. Oh, look at this. That is the island we want to go to, and the fish is towing us that way. That is cool. Oh, and I'm going over fish on the sound here. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, that was a bit of a weird... Weird thing. I think maybe his tail touched the line then. There is just fish everywhere here. Oh. <laughs> Every now and then the line hits what feels like his dorsal and goes twang, like really, really, really big twang. So I'm thinking that's him changing direction and the line hitting his dorsal fin. I hope it's not a big shark because I'll have to deal with it. Pretty cool being towed around the ocean. Oh, I tell you what, my arms are getting sore though. It's been over 10 minutes now. We're only oh, 200 meters from the island. I haven't seen what it is yet. It is extremely big. That's, that's my call, extremely big. It doesn't feel like a shark, but I haven't caught that many sharks. It's, it has got a a heap of weight in it. Like it's, it's, I'm gonna say it's a very broad fish. I can see a bit of this on the rod now. He's um, getting tired, and that usually means probably a big trevally that thump, thump, thump. But yeah, those head shakes aren't, aren't really normal. Anyway, hopefully we get to see what it is. There's a bit of tension on that line. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that. We're still going forward at 3, 3.5 kilometers an hour. It's been well over 15 minutes and I'm really not gaining on him. He's, he's staying down, probably about 6 meters down. It's only 10 meters deep, so he's, he's sort of hugging the bottom a little bit. And here he comes, here he comes. And keep in mind, this is only a 4,000 size reel with 20 pound braid not meant to do this sort of stuff and now we're actually heading back to where we came from I don't want to do this I want to go that way we're, we're into about 20 minutes and now uh, he's really not I can't lift him I can't get him up from six meters this is really quite taxing <laughs> Oh, these little rods aren't meant to catch these monster fish. And there, I see him on the sounder. He's right on the bottom. He's at 10. He is at 10. He's right under the boat, and I can see him. So, yeah, big orange line. 
I've got about four kilos of drag on this rod, which is probably about the most I want to put on it. Just got to have a drink. This thing is doing me in. He's still hugging the bottom. He will not come up. to the 25 minute mark and he is still between 10 and 6 meters. I cannot get him further closer to the surface than 6 meters. Here I am. I'm going up again. As soon as I get up to 6 meters, they'll see the light of the kite. There he goes. He's going back down. I cannot lift him up. So guys, it's been another 10 minutes and I can't get this guy above six meters. There's just so much weight in this fish. He's, he's gotta be 20, 30 kilo fish. I don't, I don't know, it could even be more, I don't know. I've just got him up to five meters, but oh, he's going back down. Oh, I've got some color here. I've got a little bit of color. I, I can see, I, I, I can't make out any shape. He's um, a light color. It's been, I don't know, 35 minutes. I'm, I'm really, I'm just, I'm struggling to hold this rod. Oh man, my hands are so sore. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to run out of battery on the camera. I can see it's, it's quite low, but I might have to turn it off again. I just, yeah, I can't, I can't change batteries out here at the moment. I might have to turn you guys off. Arms are so sore. I just got a glimpse of him. Oh, there goes a twang. I just got a glimpse of him. It's definitely a trevally type fish. This guy, I, I did turn the drag up at least half a kilo from the last fish. And uh, yeah, this guy has fought twice as hard. So he'll definitely be a bit bigger. I am really digging that rod into my chest there. Okay, here he comes. No, six meters and go back down. I must say, I am a bit impressed with this rod. The handle on the reel is a little bit, oh, you can feel it's, it's flexing, but the way this rod stood up to this battle, it's amazing. Okay, here he is. You might see the color there. Here he is, monster. I think it's a GT actually. Giant Trevally. Just, it's got a bit more gray than, um, than gold on it. But yeah, but I can't tell for sure. Oh, this is not the sort of fish you want to get on this rod. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. Tiresome. I loved it when he was dragging me towards the island, but yeah, he's pulled me, yeah, way, way past, way further, back, back to where we came from. Okay, I'm going to turn you guys off. I'm not going to get him up now. Oop, not, not at this, not these next couple of minutes anyway. <sighs> I am really starting to wonder whether I get this fish up. It is probably the hardest fight I've ever had in a kayak. I've caught a metre 1.0, oh, a metre and five centimetre barramundi and a one metre 20 centimetre barramundi in the kayak on the same day, and that was nothing compared to this. This is really actually starting to hurt me. And he is down at eight metres and I'm lucky to get him up to six at the moment. Um, yeah, I really have my doubts whether I get this guy up. There is some real pain happening right here at this end of the rod. He's fighting for his life, which he really doesn't need to. I'm gonna let him go. But there is a lot of pain at this end of the rod. I can see him again. And if you notice behind me, that's not the island. He's dragged us all the way back to the mainland. So now I've got to paddle two kilometers back there to get to the island. Oh. This kayak fishing is a solo combat sport. This is just, this is just hard. Oh. And to be honest, actually we're getting into some reef here. I hope he doesn't cut me off on the reef. Oh. I can see him now. He's not far down.
there he is, you can see the colour. He's really tired now. He is really exhausted and so am I. That's a giant, I'm, I'm almost certain it's a giant trevally. I still haven't had a really good look at him. I don't know how I'm going to get that guy in the kayak. That is one monster fish. Woo! Look at the size of that thing. Holy cow. I have beaten him. I have beaten him, but only just. I'm going to try and let him go before he dies. That is, that is probably close to the biggest GT I've ever caught. Oh, don't, don't kick, don't kick, don't kick. I'm struggling here. Oh, oh, oh that is, oh, I can't, I can't lift him up. Look at the size of it. It's freaking huge. Oh. That's enough for a glamour shot. He has got to be 25 kilos or more. Could be 30. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm that tired. Okay. Let's get the hook out and let him go. Oh. Oh, look at that. Look at the mouth on him. I can stick both my fists in there. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at the size of that mouth. Oh. I'll get that hook out of you, fella. Please don't bite me. Oh. There we go. Look at that. My fit, fist would go directly into his mouth. Look at that. Wow. It's in there. <laughs> All right. No mucking around. I'm just going to get him over the side. Oh. Oh. That is one heck of a fish gonna hold him a little while let him get some water in his gills and then hopefully he'll swim off <laughs> we're over the reef and I didn't want to get a fish on the lure whilst I'm mucking around with this guy oh, I really want him to swim off he is totally knackered and so am I here he goes here he goes he's swimming off <laughs> oh that is so cool. I am totally stuffed. Like I said, this is the mainland. I'm gonna go two, three kilometers that way. Oh, I'm not gonna film. The next thing you're gonna see is me pulling up to the beach. That is epic. That is epic. My hands are like, oh, I don't know. It's like someone's just whacked me with a stick for a half an hour. You know, I didn't even know I cut myself. Oh, wow. Anyway, let's go make camp. I did not bargain for that at all. I am not casting that rod now. I'm going to the beach. I think I got one GT bigger than that. I'll put a little um, picture here. I've, I've actually got a video of it. That guy was probably my second biggest GT, but I just wanted to show you the setup I got him on. It was a weedless worm hook with a little weight on the front, quarter ounce, I think that's a 3.0, possibly 4.0, I think it's a 3.0, and dodgily rigged like that because I, I didn't want to get bitten off. But that caught a monster giant trevally. <laughs> Just insane. Okay, let's go to the, go make camp. Oh, here we are. We're at our deserted island. Oh. It feels good to be here. I'm very knackered. And if you have a look at the sounder, it's lighting up with big fish all over again. I am too knackered to, to fish for them. All I want to do is have a poke around this corner. And I think there should be a little deserted beach that we can um, camp on. Oh, finally got to the island. Look how rugged it is. I'll give you a little closer. It's um, here yeah, on this side. It's exposed to the ocean all the time. The um, the waves just pound this, so you can't you don't get any soil and you don't get any trees growing. 
it's um yeah very rugged and deserted very cool this is like a, a stone cliff that drops straight down we've got eight meters of water underneath us i can just see the bottom very very barely um, very rugged around this side we'll go around the corner here and have a look for a deserted beach Ooh, bit of swell here this is cool oh, that's the next island there's an island around the corner oh and there's tuna out here but yeah i'm too buggered to go chase them you can see the birds working out there oh this looks nice oh, 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 oh look at this this is our beach oh oh look at the countryside here big jagged cliffs coming straight down got a few little oysters they won't be any good there they're exposed to the the ocean oh but I'm, I'm liking my chances of a crayfish here lots of rocks should be some hidey holes under the water oh, but first we're going to set up camp have a look at this big rock here that's um, probably a meter of water on top of it and three meters of water around it this is where i'll probably um, have us have a little dive and see if i can get some uh, crayfish And here we are, deserted beach on my own private island. Whew. It comes complete with panoramic, scenic, dead trees on the beach. <laughs> oh, let's go, um, go explore and see where I'm going to set up camp. I'd like a bit of shade if I can. The beach is made up of broken shells and a lot of dead coral. It's um, it's not really fine sand, but it's it's definitely sandy. There you go. And the, the water's looking pretty clear. A little bit windy. Um, the tide will go out here, and we'll just have a poke around this way here, around the mangroves, just just see what we've got going on here. I've spotted a nice black spot tusk fish here in the shallows. I don't know how close I'll get to him. He's about four meters away now. And it's really cool. Just just to yeah, just turn up at a spot and there's a nice fish. He's looking at he's looking right at me now. He's actually eating something there. I'm only two meters from him now. Here he is. He's still eating. He's munch oh there he goes, he's seen me. <laughs> there he goes. That is cool. Oh I still have to catch some uh, dinner. Actually you know what? This is really cool as well. We've got some I think they're mangrove rays. They're in the mangroves, but they're actually called mangrove rays. See these black dots here? There's one, two, three, four. They're gonna scoot off in there, I think. That is cool. I'm gonna get right up close to these guys. Look at this. That's three mangrove rays right there. Look at this. I am less than a meter. I could, I could touch this guy. I won't because he'll probably try and sting me. Yeah, I'll touch his tail. Look, that's his tail. <laughs> That is so cool. Let's grab this one too. Nah, he's taken off. There's actually a few more in here. Have a look at this. Look at that. That's why they're called mangrove rays, I guess. That is cool. It's always worth going just that little bit further. Just have a poke around. There's another mangrove ray. Two, two, look at this. One there and one over there. So cool. right behind the mangroves now I think you get uh, that's cicadas I think yeah that that noise hopefully it's not too loud for you they, they can be really loud um, big boulders here really dry looking country this this island um, yeah oh these rocks are really hot I'm gonna go back to the beach where it's nice and cool but yeah those, those mangrove rays were very cool Let's see what we can find at the other end of the beach. Might just grab my shoes. Those rocks were quite hot back there. Oh, 
I'll tell you the first thing I find interesting about this end of the beach, and you've already noticed it, is all this seaweed. There is just loads and loads of seaweed. You can see it all the way in the back corner here. That's, um, yeah, interesting. The, um, the prevailing winds push into this, this corner here, so... And check this out, we're at the other end of the beach and there's another mangrove ray. See how close I can zoom in on him. That's him there. He's just going under that mangrove. There he is. See a little fella. I can't say I've ever seen so much seaweed just pushed into one little corner of one little beach. It's, um, for me it's very strange. But check out the colours out here. There's like every blue-green colour imaginable. It's, um, yeah, it's an amazing place. So this is the other end of the beach. This is, yeah, big cliffs. This stuff looks like granite. It's um, got a kind of a pinky-orange tinge to it. Um, but again, look at, look at how blue the ocean is out there. Bluey-green. That's really cool. I'm just having a poke around the back of the, the sand dunes here. And the interesting thing is, this is all coral. If you have a look at this, it looks really grey, but that's because the sun's been like beating down on it. There's even some snails here. Yeah, have a look at that. Some snails. This is all coral. And we are probably 40, 50 metres from the beach. And yeah, it goes way into the back here. So what happens is the, the wind pushes all the coral onto the beach and the beach keeps moving forwards. So yeah, interesting stuff. Very hot here. Um, don't want to put my tent on this hot coral. These trees are called casuarinas or she oaks and they drop a lot of these needles and wherever they are it's usually a little bit softer if you have a look through here yes this this is probably what i'm looking for a little bit of shade and yeah she oak needles i reckon this will be my camp spot right here right on the beach just back a little bit kayaks over there yeah i think this is it perfect Home is made. It's about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to go check out those rocks and see if I can spearfish a crayfish. So I'm taking the kayak over a bit closer to where I think the crayfish are. That way I don't have to swim, you know, 200 metres. Well, um, I don't know, I'll tie it up maybe on a rock or something like that. There we go. This looks like a pretty good spot. The big rocks start just here. And the kayak isn't going to go anywhere. The tide's actually dropping. So.
There's a bit of seaweed down there and a few rocks, but nowhere for them to hide, so I'm going to have to try somewhere else. It's getting a little late though, so um, yeah. After 4, 4.30, I really don't want to be in the water anymore. Anyway, we'll um, see if we can find another spot. It doesn't seem to matter wherever I go, the water's just getting dirtier and dirtier. I can barely see the bottom and it's 1.8 metres deep, so um, I think I'm going to have to give up on the spear fishing for today. It's just that the tide's too high, the water's too dirty, the sun's getting a bit low. So I'm going to try and catch a, a dead fish for dinner just with the, um, the spin rod. Dropped him. Yep, that's a good one. Oh, what, what have we got? Oh, not a bad stripey. Yeah, that's actually a good size stripey. Check out that guy. <laughs> we'll take him, that'll be dinner. You notice how, how fat this fish is? Um, it's either spawning or it's just eating something. What I might do is just clip it on and just keep it in the water and, and see if I can't get a better fish. Um, something a little bit bigger, something that doesn't look like it's pregnant. And um, yeah, see how we go. If that stripey indeed has eggs in it, um, I want to let it go. So he's happy just sitting there in the water at the moment. Let's see if we can catch a, maybe a coral trout or a big sweet lip or something. Yep. Oh, yeah. What have we got? Ooh. <laughs> I think it's another stripey. Oh, no. Sweet lip. There we go. He's, uh, I'm going to say he's undersized. If, if he's not undersized, he's very close. So we'll let him go. There we go. Let him go. Off you go, bud. Let's see what we can get. I'm just letting it drop all the way to the bottom. And then twitch, twitch, wind. Twitch, twitch, wind. Yep, got it. Oh, I just looked away there. Uh, what have we got? Another sweet lamp. There we go. A little sweet lamp. Off you go, buddy. They like to spike you. We're back at camp. Um, it's nice to camp places and just, just be relaxed. I don't have to rush home. Everybody, everybody now, it's probably 4.30 in the afternoon, everybody's thinking about going home. And I'm thinking about making a fire, cooking my dinner, and sleeping the night on the beach. First thing I'm gonna do is put the fish out of his misery. He's still alive, so just give him a brain spike. Yeah, that's him done. And then I'm gonna scale him because I want to cook him pretty much whole. I'm really curious to find out what's in his stomach. I'm gonna say he's eaten, I don't know, a couple of herring or something like that. But we want to gut him anyway, so. Cut him open and have a look. So we have fish row. This fish is actually full of eggs. Look at that. That is just, that's why he was so fat, or she was so fat. That's huge, all right. We're not gonna waste these, we're gonna eat them. So if you can see in there, there's actually a couple of worms in here. So, I don't know, I'm not sure about eating this. Yeah, it's definitely, some big, big worms in here. Um, we're going to make an executive decision and not eat that. It's a shame, but yeah, I don't want worms in me, so this will go back in the environment and something will eat it. And the local sharks can have the, the head and the guts.
when I planned this trip, I knew the winds would be light and the tides would be small. Woo, that tire's hot. <laughs> Just about burnt me. Um, so I'm really quite surprised that the water's this dirty. Um, it's not usually this dirty when it's both conditions. I might try again in the morning, but uh, I think I think getting a crayfish this trip probably won't happen. It's um, pleasant being on the beach though. It's uh, just a light breeze at the moment. There's not a cloud in the sky. Spin you around. It's um, yeah, really, really nice out here. So when it gets dark, I reckon I'll get the head torch and maybe poke around on this, this shallow flat here. Low tide should be, I think, 8 o'clock tonight. And that means it should be dark and the tide out as far as it's going to go. So hopefully we're going to see some really interesting critters. This is going to be a pretty simple recipe, but the flavours should be quite nice. And I reckon it'll be really tasty. Just get a couple of cloves of garlic and I'm just going to chop them up nice and fine. We'll get the stripey and just score him, I don't know, four or five times each side. And then we'll get the, the garlic and just pop it into the flesh. There we go. And then we get a bit of salt on both sides. And that's it. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Garlic, salt, and in the pan, we're gonna melt some butter. I actually had the butter sitting way too close to the fire, so no need to pre-melt it. It is already melted. The pan looks hot enough, let's try it out. Oh yeah, nice sizzle. How good was the fishing today? The coral trout, I don't mind letting them go. I was hoping to get another one later in the afternoon, but stripey, nothing wrong with stripey. The golden trevally, he was he was a great fish. And then that giant trevally, that that pushed me to the limit. My, uh, my wrists and hands were, were really aching. That was 35, 40 minutes, I think. That was just, just epic. It's actually a really nice sunset. Uh, the, the, the sun's gone down behind me, but the hills and the islands in front of me have got this like kind of orange glow to it. I mean, that fish is ready to be turned. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, look at the color on that. That is just beautiful. He's already flaking apart there as well. Yeah, nice. That fish is almost cooked, and I want to eat the fish while it's hot, so I'll finish cooking the fish, but then I'm going to chop up a potato, and I'll have that afterwards. I don't mind if I have my meat first and then my potato afterwards. Um, I just really want to eat that fish with that buttery garlic flavour while it's still warm. You can really see where the rod stuck into me. It's all through here, around here, and that one there especially. That's a bit of a bruise there. But he was fighting for his life. I just wanted to get the lure out of him and send him back into the deep. Here we are. The first course of my dinner is ready. Oh, he's falling apart. There we go. Look at that. Ooh, we got a nice fire going here. <laughs> I've cut them into halves because they'll fit in the pan better. Stick that back on the fire. Let's try this fish. It actually looks really, really good colours. And I did baste it with oil a little bit. You guys saw that. So what do you guys reckon? It's pretty basic. It's just garlic butter and salt but I reckon it should taste taste great oh that's actually really nice and crispy there oh let's try that mmm mm. definitely getting the garlic flavor coming through there 
a lot of nice oil on there as well, the butter. Some of that skin has gone really crunchy. And I always leave my skin on the fish if I can. Um, two episodes ago, I think it was two, three. I don't know, I've been making a few overnight trips lately. I did fish skin crackling. And if you haven't seen it, go check that episode out. Fish skin crackling is great. Mm. I think small fish like stripies are generally overlooked as a, as a decent table fish. Because one, they're quite small. Well, actually, probably just because they're quite small. Mm. But the flavour is just like mangrove jack. They're the same family. Mm. And it's, yeah, butter, garlic, salt, fresh fish. Can't go wrong. I'm looking forward to the potatoes as well. They're going to take a little while, but... Mm, look at that, guys. White flaky meat. Mm. I'm actually quite keen to see what we can find at night with a head torch, too. That should be fun. The black bits are actually the burnt garlic, which I don't think will taste bad at all. Right on dark, and my second course is ready. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, they're tender as... A little bit crispy on the bottom. Let's have a look at the bottom. Yeah, look at the colour on that. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to get into my second course. Basically, this is fish and chips. Oh, there it goes. Mm. Lucky they didn't all go in the Sam. That oil on those potatoes, pretty good. This is my favourite part of the day. Right on sunset. And actually... Pretty much right on sunrise as well. Best two times of the day. You might have noticed I got really sunburnt today. So have a look at my hand. You can see a, a line where the sun was and where the sun wasn't. I'm sure my face is quite burnt. It feels feels quite hot. Mm, but this time of day, it's nice and cool. The wind's just a gentle breeze, and you get all those pastely colours. In the sky. I can't recommend highly enough that everybody should get out there. It doesn't have to be to a deserted island or a deserted beach. Go out in the park, sit under a tree, go down by the beach. If you're in the desert, sit on a sand dune. Just get out there and enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going to finish my second course and then we'll see what's out there at night. been dark for quite a while and we're going to go out and see what we can see at night with the head torch. I don't think I've ever done this before. Going out on a coral flat. This is all coral. This is all coral. Lots of, actually there's, look at this, hundreds of little, see there's all those little snails there. Hundreds just everywhere here. Wow. Okay, let's see what else we can find. We've got a blue swimmer crab here. It's going to be a bit hard to see. It's a little windy. But there he is. Right there. That's cool. Didn't expect to see him out here. Oh, there's some little fish. Oh, where's the crab? That's him right there. Right on the bottom. Yeah, we've got a little baby long tom here. Oop. <laughs> There are prawns here. Where'd he go? I just saw him. You can just see the slightest bit of eye shine. And here we have our friend the mangrove ray. You should be able to see him there, I think. There you go. I'm right on him. Less than a meter away. There you go. That's a mangrove ray. <laughs> He's, um... I don't know what he's, he's got some snails or something under him. Hey, I'll show you how close I am. Look at that. I don't want to poke him on top because he'll, he'll stick his barb in, but what I'll do is I'll touch his tail. Here you go. Look. Here he goes. <laughs> Not sure if the camera's going to pick this up, but there's a prawn on the bottom there. I'll get my hand in the water. He's right in front of my finger, right there. Touch him. 
Oh, he's gonna eat my finger. <laughs> We've got an epaulette shark here. He's very active, they're never usually this fast. Oh, he's going in deeper water. I can't keep up with him. He's cool. I've got no chance of grabbing him. He's just too fast. Uh, oh, let you go, buddy. Hey, He's right at my feet. <laughs> Not sure he knows what to do. Hey, what are you going to do, buddy? I don't know if he's feeding or if he's just... Yeah, there it goes. Hey, see ya. I think this is some kind of sand eel. It's um, long and skinny with like a black and white head. Let's see how close I can get to him. That's cool. I've never seen one of these guys before. That's cool. He's about 40 centimeters long. He's definitely on the hunt. Oh, there goes my light. That was pretty cool out on the flats. The um, epaulette shark was my favorite. I picked them up before, but yeah, he was just way too quick for me to get him. And now it's time for tonight's fire story. I watched a movie a couple of nights ago called Red Dog. Now I thought I'd seen it before and it's the same title, but it's a different movie. The one I just saw was the prequel to the one I'd seen earlier. So basically what it means is the story I just saw happened before the movie which came first. It's, yeah, a little bit confusing. Anyway, in the first movie, there's a red kelpie. And he befriends a bunch of people and is basically a misfit, runs around and he's kind of searching for something and he never sticks around. This fire is actually getting really hot, wow. When I saw Red Dog a couple of days ago, it actually tugged on my heart a little bit because I grew up with a red kelpie. The way they portray that dog in the movie is 100% right. That's exactly how they are. He was my best friend. He would not leave my side. Even I would, I would ride my push bike 20 kilometers and he would run. Apparently red dogs or red kelpies will run until they die. They they will not stop. They will keep running until they die. So you got to be careful if you own one. Um, probably one of the funniest stories. Oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of stories with him, but one one that really I just remember all the time. We went crabbing. There was two of us in the dinghy, and I didn't want to take the dog Skipper. I didn't want to take him on the boat because. I didn't want him to get bit by a mud crab. So I left him on the beach. I said, look, stay, stay. And he sat down and he stayed, but he never stayed. He always <laughs> followed. Anyway, we went out probably three, four, 500 meters out to sea and he started swimming. Red dogs, Kelpies, the, the, the brown ones, they, they do not like water. They hate water. Anyway, I thought, no, nah, he'll turn around after 100 metres. He'll turn around after two, three, four. Probably close to 500 metres, he was still swimming and we were still going the other way. It's like, okay, now we've got to stop. So we went and picked him up. But if you want a loyal, true friend, a red dog, a red kelpie, you can't beat him. Anyway, he was my pal growing up. And, yeah, I just remember him really well. That movie is, yeah, it's like that movie was about my childhood. It was, yeah, I don't know, I can't, I can't explain it. It's um, just one of those things. And at the end of the movie, I thought, oh, wow, they've, they've really captured the essence of what it is for a kid to have a dog. But to me, that was, it was exactly how my, my childhood was with that dog. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I can hear the wind's kicked in already. It's um, not this second, but yeah, you can hear it up on the ridge over there. 
Let's have a poke outside. I don't think it's too windy yet. It's, um, oh, there's a bit of... Ah, let's have a look out here. There's a bit of... A bit of roughness on the water. You can see the trees moving around a lot. Oh, it's not even, not even sunrise yet. There you go, that's it. Yeah, it's windy. Oh. oh, I think I'm gonna have to get out of here. For a bed last night, I had two thin ground mats and the bottom one actually was leaking so basically I had just a thin thin ground mat and a sleeping bag for a pillow I used this little dry bag and all I did was shove my shirt and shorts in it which is not enough yeah anyway I really need to get some uh, yeah, dedicated gear as you can see I've got my light my phone cameras just in the tent with me here save them getting moisture on them outside but yeah I think we'll cook some breakfast and we won't stick around too long because it's only going to get windier today um, when there's wind in here it whistling up on the hills and moving the trees in here at you know it's five in the morning it's yeah it's just going to get worse today you can hear you can, well you can see the trees there they're moving around again um, so we'll head back before it gets too rough. And I am really sunburnt. I, I got hammered yesterday. Anyway. It's cool being out here. It's just, yeah. It doesn't have all the comforts of home. banana for breakfast then we'll cook some bacon and eggs mm. let's get breakfast on the go a little bit of butter because I'm kayaking 12 kilometers well actually probably more like about 15 in these two days I've got a nice little breakfast hash brown and some really yummy streaky bacon. Mm. You gotta keep your energy up whilst you're exerting yourself. I also find that bacon keeps okay for one, one day without being refrigerated. I think this area has huge potential. After finding a few spots on the sounder, I was just paddling from A to B and yeah, I came across at least three, maybe four spots. I think I need to do this in my boat, do overnight camps, maybe maybe a couple of nights. There's a couple of nice beaches out here. The reason I'm doing it in the kayak, one, is it's different and I enjoy it, but number two is my motor's being fixed. Well, I'm fixing my motor. The tilt mechanism after, I think, 950 hours, it leaked. So I took it to the local guy. He fixed it. It lasted two weeks cost me 350 bucks I'm not going back there again so I managed to find some parts they're on their way and hopefully I'll have my boat up and running next week um, I've had to order a couple of new parts so yeah um, but I think let me know in the comments if you think I should explore this area in the boat um, with the kayak it's quite slow you do find more things um, when you're going slow sometimes but I can cover more ground in the boat so let me know in the comments if you think I should do it in the boat. The other thing I was gonna say whilst breakfast is cooking is the survey about coming traveling with me, if you're on a phone or an iPad, you really need to expand the description. I'll put a little, I don't know, graphic over here where there's a little, either a, a little arrow or three dots where you, you press that and it, and it drops 
the description down. If you can only see three lines of, of what the video is about, you can't see the whole description. You need to drop that down and then it's the first link in this video. And yeah, please fill that out if, if you're keen, if you're one of my true fans. Uh, click on that, fill it out. The trips will be organized by Trover Trip. I'll be going on them. You'll, you'll meet me, you'll fish with me, but I won't be guiding. They're not guided trips by me. They're guided trips by other people that you and I, we get to enjoy and go on. So it won't be free, obviously, because there's people organizing it, there's people guiding. But if you're interested, fill the survey out in the description. And yeah, I might get to fish with you possibly as early as next year. Um, with this, this COVID thing, I, I don't know how it's gonna work out. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing too is people are saying, oh, I live in America, I live in Canada, or I live in South Africa. It doesn't matter where you live on the planet. The whole idea is that I travel to somewhere with people or I meet people there. It just depends on how the logistics work. We go to this country, we go to that country. It's not about you guys coming here. It's about us exploring together. Anyway, I hope that explains it a bit better. I, I may not have explained it really well. Anyone can fill a survey out. Doesn't matter, just do it. <laughs> How's this for a nice breakfast? We got fried eggs. Come on, let you come. Bacon, hash brown, and avocado. I do like to present my food. There we go, look at that. Breakfast on a deserted beach and island. <laughs> oh, let's, let's eat. Those yolks will still be, look at that. Yolks are still runny. Right. Oh, I've got to have a bit of bacon first. Need energy. Mmm. Yum yum. Mmm. 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 The wind isn't as bad as it first sounded. Like at five this morning, you could hear it whistling over the top of the hill. I think it's changed direction. It was forecast to go from northeast to northwest, and I'm sure it's gone to northwest. Oh, no, I can I can hear it over the hill, so I'm definitely protected here. It's actually coming right over the back of me. Yesterday it was coming this way. So anyway, we'll see how we go. I'm going to eat my breakfast. I'm, I'm going to see if I can have a fish. Well, if I see something on the sand, I'll do a drop. Mm. I just really hope I don't hook another one of those big giant trevally. That thing was a monster. I had hoped to go spear fishing for crayfish, but for whatever reason, the water's just too dirty. If I had my boat. I'd go further around the corner and I reckon it would be clear, but that would be another 10 kilometers there and 10 kilometers back, so I don't see that happening in the kayak. I, well, especially with the wind's forecast 15 to 20. Um, it's, it's not a bad direction, but it's, yeah, it makes it hard paddling. This is a luxurious breakfast. <laughs> be paddling into the wind on the way home. Anyway, I'm going to finish this. You guys will see me packing up camp it's amazing I can manage to squeeze it all into the kayak the way it, it does the um, Viking reload actually has a, a ton of room and I could I could probably stay out here for a week with a few choice um, um, few, few good choices of, of what food to take something that lasts without refrigeration catch my own fish, hopefully crayfish one day, and um, yeah, that could be an episode coming up.
it's amazing how much gear you can stick in front of one of these Viking kayaks. I'll stick the narrow ones in first. They go all the way up. Ooh, that's right up there. They go right up there. Look at that. Half my arm's going in there. And the soft, squishy one. That can get jammed in there. The tent, that doesn't want to get too squished because it's got poles in it. Look at that. Heaps of room still. And then the drifter bay with so much gear that I don't even use. It can go in sideways. Look at that. And then, life jacket. Easily accessible. And that's the front hatch loaded. And that hatch with this seal is completely waterproof. Come on, kayak. Uh, I've got the wheels under there again. I haven't loaded the back section because there's too much weight on the wheels with this coral here. I don't want to puncture them. But having wheels definitely helps dragging across the shallow uh, coral flat. Oh, that's actually going quite well. Oh, another. 40 meters to go. Make sure I get it out far enough so I don't have to drag it anymore. I think they should do it. There we go. Whew. Yeah, they're very small wheels, but that's enough. I got too excited fishing yesterday, so I didn't show you all these little hatches. They're all watertight, like airtight. And I've just got the plastics I was using, a knife and cutters and file just the, the really handy things right between my legs there I've got two more they're identical and I've just got leader there sinkers extra hooks and this here is a tackle pod I've got my cameras phone and uh, sat phone in there so and that's that's dry as well I'm just about to leave, make sure I haven't left any rubbish or gear, cameras, nothing, nothing over there, nothing over here. Okay, we're good to go. It's 7.30 in the morning and I'm just about ready to leave. I've got my dive gear in the back here underneath everything. And this is in a dry bag but I like to keep it up nice and high so that if the, if the water does come in it, yeah. Doesn't doesn't get saturated somehow. Lift it off the wheels. I should have done that before I put the heavy stuff in. Yeah, very handy little devices for kayaking. And that will just go on the back like so. That's it, we're loaded. I got the wheels, I got the water bottle, leftover food. We're good to go. Turn on the sounder. All the housekeeping stuff, there we go. In hindsight, this would have been better to do before I jumped in. Uh, now I'm floating and balancing, but that's okay. These things are pretty stable. There we go, shoes are secured. Oops. Oh, is that a fish? That was a fish. Over there, school of fish, little ones. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.